Leveraging Power Automate to filter data from SharePoint lists or libraries requires us to plug in OData filter criteria, which could be a challenge for citizen developers. Imagine a scenario in which we get a GUI-like experience wherein we can pick our columns, define our criteria, and automatically it creates the OData filter criteria for us. That's exactly what I will showcase in this video. So let's check it out in action. I have a manually triggered flow that gets items from a SharePoint list. The list has a wide variety of column types from text to numbers, dates, lookups, and more. I then create an HTML table based on the output of the get items action. And that HTML table is what I send out as an email. The email sends me a table of all the rows from that SharePoint list and the columns are the ones that I selected in that HTML table action. For the get items action, under show advanced options, we have filter query. This is an OData filter query that allows us to perform filter queries server side in this scenario, the query will be performed on the SharePoint list or library, depending upon the action that I'm leveraging. Get items is for lists. Get files is for document libraries. To perform filter queries, we need to learn the OData filter query syntax. To simplify this process, there is a new experimental feature that provides a GUI-like experience for creating these filter queries. To enable this, I will head over to settings, go to view all power automate settings and turn on the experimental features and click save. Once this feature is turned on for the get items action under show advanced options, the filter query dialogue experience becomes citizen developer friendly. I can select a column from my SharePoint list. I'll start with the title column. Filter the items in my SharePoint list. If the title is equal to, I will take this specific item, which is AC7320, and I will enter the value associated with it. I will go ahead and test my flow. The flow has run successfully, and the email that I have received only includes that specific item from my SharePoint list. If you would like to look at the actual OData filter query, you would need to switch to advanced mode. And here is the syntax, title equals in single quotes, the value. I will switch back to basic mode. I can also perform a starts with operation. Filter all the items from my data source where the title starts with AC. I have two records that match that criteria. When this flow runs, here is the output that this filter query action has generated. It provides those two records. Another common scenario is to check if the text column contains the text. For that, we would need to type the OData filter query, substring of the text that you would like to search in single quotes comma, the internal name of the SharePoint column that you are trying to search in. In my case, my column internal name is title. These two items contain 00 in the title. I'll run this flow. The output that I receive includes the items from my SharePoint list where the title contains 00. To get the internal name of your columns, in your SharePoint list or library experience, if you simply go ahead and sort on your columns, the URL at the top will have an attribute called sort field is equal to. This would be the internal name of the column. I will search for the word surface on the model column. I will test this flow. And here is the output of the filter query action. I get four items, 
where the model contains the text surface. Now the supported OData query operations for SharePoint are as follows. And specifically focusing here on the filter query action, we can use less than, greater than, equals, not equals, and more. Now the filter query action, the columns that it lists out here are typically text columns, date columns, and number columns. So as an example, if I pick the due date column, the comparison types I can perform, I have more options, equals, greater than, greater than, or equals, and more. Choice columns, status in my list is a choice column. So if I need to filter my SharePoint list where the status is in use, I need to ensure that I have the internal name of this column. So I will just sort and I will pick the sort field internal name. The status column doesn't list out out here. So what I can do is I can add a custom item, put in status and say status equals in use. I will test this flow. The result of that filter query action are three rows from my SharePoint list where the status is in use. For lookup columns, in my example, I have another list called asset types where I'm maintaining the type of the assets. And in my main asset manager list, I have this lookup column that looks up to the title column of that list. To filter the data based on all the assets that are of type laptop, I will add a custom item, the internal name of my lookup column, slash the column that I'm looking up to, which in my case is the title column in my lookup list. So if this is equal to laptop, I'll test this flow. The output of that action are three records from my SharePoint list that are all of type laptop. We can apply multiple filters for the filter query action. As an example, I will add a custom item for it, put the internal name of my column, status equals in use, and the purchase price is greater than or equal to 300. Let's run this flow. The output of the multiple filters that I performed is as follows. I have two records in my SharePoint list where the status is in use and the purchase price is greater than $300. Person type column. Current owner is a column of type person or group. My filter condition, get all the items from the asset manager list that belong to Reza. In my filter query action, it will not list out the person column. I will go to add a custom item and paste the internal column name. Person column is a complex type column in SharePoint. I'll put a slash and I would like to search based on the email property. E M both uppercase. AIL lowercase. If that is equal to, in this case, I'll plug in my email address. And this I can also get from dynamic content. I will bring it from the email address of the user who is triggering this flow. So let's go ahead and test this. The output of the filter query is a single row from my SharePoint list since Reza is the owner of only one item. Let's take the person column again. Get me all the assets where there is no current owner assigned. The formula for this would be current owner email equals simply type in null. Make sure you go to switch to advanced mode. You see equals null, it puts these single quotes next to it. So it is treating it as a string. So this is something that you have to be careful. So I will simply change this to equals null and I will test the flow. The output are three records from my SharePoint list where there is no owner defined. In the order by property of the get items action, I will simply put the internal name of the column I would like to sort on. 
By default, it will sort in ascending order. If you want to sort it in descending, I can type in DESC. I'll sort it in ascending, test the flow. The data is sorted based on the model column in ascending order. Now we can make the filter query conditions and the values we apply for filtering dynamic. Let's say I need the items that are being owned by my manager. For that, we have the get manager action from the Office 365 users connector. So whose manager are you looking out for? The current user who is running the flow. In the filter query action, current owner equals the mail property from the get manager action. In my scenario, I have set Sarah as my manager in Active Directory. My manager, which is Sarah, I only have one row in my SharePoint list. The filter query criteria, current owner equals, let's say user one reports to me. I'll add another row. Current owner email equals, let's say user two, user three, user four, and so on and so forth. And all of these, I would like to run in an OR data operation because I need all the items belonging to any one of those users. However, here I have hard coded how many users are reporting to me. If I switch to the advanced mode, we can see the format that it expects. Current owner email equals the email address of that user. This in brackets, then a space, an or condition, a space, and then my second criteria. Now this entire criteria is what I would like to create dynamically based upon the users who report to me. For that, I will leverage the get direct reports action from the Office 365 users connector. So get me all the users who report to me in Active Directory. I will add an action. I will use the select data operation action. So select from get direct reports dynamic value. I will choose is value. And for the map property, I will switch to text mode. Remove all this code and map it to the dynamic value mail coming in from the get direct reports action. So I have the email that is this portion, but I need the remaining part of it as well. So I'm simply going to copy this and paste it right here. And where I have this user one, I will remove this and right in between those two double quotes, I will paste that dynamic value mail. And this entire query, I will put it under double quotes. And all I have to do now is join them with the space or space text. And to do that, we have a join data operation action. So join from the output of the select action and join this with space or space. Join will contain that entire OData query. And for my filter query condition, I need to make sure I am in the advanced mode. The OData filter query will come dynamically from the output of the join action. Let's test this flow. In my active directory, James and Sarah report to me. In my SharePoint list, there are items that are owned by James and Sarah, and these are the two items. I only get those records that are owned by users who report to me in Active Directory. Filter the data where the due date is less than today. Filter query, I will pick the due date column is less than to put today's date from expressions. I will leverage the function UTC now. Let's test the flow. I am recording this video as of the 21st of October, 2022. So it will only return those items where the due date is less than October 21st. Now to get all the records where the due date is in the month of October, 
I need to filter based on a date range. And the range is get me all the items where the due date is greater than or equal to the 1st of October and the due date is less than 1st of November. Due date greater than or equal to the first day of the current month. That is the month when I'm running this flow. I will head over to expressions and there is an expression function called start of month. And all this needs is the timestamp for which you need the first day of the month. UTC now will give me the current date and time when this flow is running. So this will give me the first day of that month. And so I'll add a row. The due date is less than the first day of the next month. Now to get that, I will simply copy this expression to get the first day of the month. And before get items, I will add an action, which is add to time. It's a date time action. The base time, I will plug in that expression, which gives me the first day of the current month. And to this, I will add one month. So this will go a month ahead. And the output of this is what I will plug in to my second criteria, which is due date is less than the dynamic value calculated time coming in from the add to time action. Let's test this flow. And the output If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.